and plenty of horses that you can make a bit of a case for. We've got Dare to Shout improving, looking to land the hat trick. Hardy de Soy and uh, front view down in grade a little bit. Dance with the wind, just one little blip last time out, but generally being in good form. Albert's back, one that likes the track. Plenty of these that come into it with a bit of a shout. Makes for a good racing prospect. Here's Mike. And they're off for the Join Racing TV Now Handicap Hurdle. Class 3 event. Good contest this. Over two miles, nine flights, of course, to take Hardy de Soy and Sizing Potsy in the pale blue jacket. Going down the straight here, leading Celestial Horizon, who's two and a half lengths away in third. And then on the inside is Dance with the Wind, who races together there with the favourite Dare to Shout the Grey in the red and green chevrons as they cross over the first flight. They're followed then by the pale blue and red of Albert's back on the inside, Utred. Front view is covered up in the white cap of J.P. McManus's two runners, racing alongside the core specialist, Francham. And Pyramid Place held up, as usual, in last in, in the pink and green colours as they race on towards the third flight of hurdles here. Sizing Potsy on the inside of the course, a big leap. Matched, though, on the outside by Hardy de Soy, wearing cheek pieces for the first time today, Hardy de Soy. Often hard to pick out when they're brown, though, but he's got them on. Uh, racing about three lengths, four lengths maybe behind. In third is Dance with the Wind, who races together there with Dare to Shout, the grey, close up in fourth place. Celestial Horizon is flanking Albert's back. Utrecht, black with the orange star, is next to the rail, with front view on his outside. These two were first and second in a cork maiden hurdle a few seasons ago, would you believe it? And here they are at Weatherby squaring up again. Last but one then in the red sleeves, five-time course winner Francham and Pyramid Place still looking on. Down the back straight they go then on towards the fourth, fifth and sixth flights. And these familiar Kenny Alexander colours on sizing Potsy, the honeysuckle silks leading narrowly. Hardy de Soy jumping nicely on the outside, travelling nicely as well. They're all going pretty well to be honest. As you'd expect, approaching the fifth flight of hurdles down the back straight, dance with the wind, keeping to the inside of the grey dare, dare to shout. The first time in a handicap for dare to shout there, the grey for the Hamiltons. Wider out then to Albert's back, wider on the course is Celestial Horizon. First colours of JP, Johns Jr. in the white cap on board front view is held up towards the rear of the field as they cross over the last on the far side. Utrecht just on ahead of front view. Pyramid Place uh, still towards the rear, just tracking Francham in the red sleeves as they reach the end of the back straight. So, so far, everyone's been traveling pretty well here. There's only about five or six lengths separating the whole field as they come down the turn down the side of the course now and they begin to approach the entrance to the home straight. Got just over half a mile left to travel now with on the inside still sizing Potsy in the hands of Jack Tudor, taken on by Hardy de Soy and Gavin Sheehan. Now, Dare to Shout's being driven along on that bend there, the grey. You can see him just behind uh, Dance with the Wind, who's also being given the hurry up. Albert's back is travelling really strongly into third place there for Brian Hughes, and Francham's on the move as well. Then on the inside, Dare to Shout trying to rally. They're all now beginning to try and pick their places here for the... Oh, and John Joe's been unseated on front view. Made a mistake at the third last there and has been unseated. Just went shaken up. Let's hope he's all right. Up towards the second last, Hardy de Soy is asserting. But on the outside, Albert's back looks a big danger. Francham back in third running well. Keeping on at the same pace as Dare to Shout. One more flight to go. Hardy de Soy and Albert's back coming towards it now in the air together. Hardy de Soy under strong pressures too with Albert's back. This is a great battle here in the closing stages. Gavin Sheehan and Brian Hughes and it's Albert's back who begins to wear down Hardy de Soy. Albert's back driven out, goes on to win for the Easterbys. The champion jockey in the winner's enclosure. Hardy de Soy, a good run for second. Very tight for third. Pyramid place running on to press. Francham, I'll leave that one to the judge. What a good race that was, and it's been won by Albert back for Mick and David Easterby. Brian Hughes in the saddle, very strong in the saddle, seeing off the clash dropping Hardy de Soy, and the pair of them well clear of the rest. 15 to 2, Albert's back wins at, and gaining 
a six, uh, fourth career success from eight starts at this track. There's John Joe O'Neill Jr. up OK by the looks of things after that unseat from front view. And there is the winner, under champion jockey Brian Hughes. Been really gutsy and responded to all the urgings from Brian, having travelled into the race really quite kindly, Mark. He did. He travelled strongly down the back straight. Turned slightly wide by, by Brian, who knows the horse really well. That's the fifth time he's ridden him to success. Cutting the ground, I think, is pretty essential to him. Handicapper had given him a chance, back to a mark of 127, and he just gets the better of Hardy de Sewell, who was ridden positively by Gavin Sheehan, had the cheek pieces on for the first time. He's run his race. He's just found a better one on the day. As you mentioned, you can see kept wide by Brian Albert's back. He was always out in a, a bit of daylight. Um, also in that sort of position was Celestial Horizon and Francham, who may well have just been caught late on for, for third spot. Um, the eventual runner-up, never too far away, he's got the lead at this point. He has, yeah. Cheek piece is on for the first time, so that's probably helped him travel a bit better than he had in one or two of his previous races. But he's run well, uh, carrying a, a, a biggish weight of 11 stone 7. You've got size in pots. He was handy as well. He's um, He was back over hurdles today. But Brian Hughes, you're drawn to the way that Albert's back's travelling, travelling strongly in behind. So the runners at the start of a minute now to the off. Yeah, I think that um, Rubina Rose has got a chance here against this favourite. Let's see how we get on. Four to six still, Cantora winning on turf when we last saw her. Takes on the Wolverhampton winner, Rubina Rose. Have to go behind. Now, how hard can it be is uh, making it hard for the stalls handlers at the moment. How hard could it be making life hard for the stalls handlers at the moment? One in. Waiting for just one more now. Rubina Rose. So Rubina Rose will eventually hopefully complete the lineup under Andrea. Thanks, Heidi. Yeah, last one coming in. Rubina Rose. And Rubina Rose. Andrea Razzeni in the Usos Park stud colours. We'll complete the line. Set and they're off. Jumped away over a mile and a quarter. 
for the Talk Sport Download the app, Phillies Handicap Stakes. And the first to show is Cantora in the hands of William Buick in the pink colours. She's going to make the running from Rubina Rose, who's going to sit in second place in the yellow and black under Andrea Ratzeni. In third is Miss Harmony in the light blue of Midland Park under Joe Bradnam. In the back mark of the quartet is the grey Luke Morris on how hard can it be as they make the run down the far side. They've covered the first two furlongs now. So Cantora settles down in front here, having won her last two starts last season. She looks for the hat-trick here in the hands of the champion jockey, and she leads by a couple of lengths. Rubina Rose, who was a winner at Wolverhampton when last seen, she's racing in second place, taking the trail in the yellow and black Andrea Ratzeni. In third place, then, is Miss Harmony, and the back marker of the quartet remains the grey. How hard could it be? As they make the run, then, towards the final five furlongs. So heading towards halfway, it's still Cantora, who leads by just over a length to Rubina Rose, who tracks the leader in second place. They're in... Single file, racing in third is Miss Harmony, and the back marker remains, how hard can it be? No change in the order as they make the turnover at the far end inside the half mile now, turning towards the side of the course, and it's still Cantora who dictates the fractions here and leads them back towards the side of the course, travelling at around 34 miles an hour. Cantora leading to Rabina Rose, who's poised in second place in her slipstream as they head for the final three. In behind them is Miss Harmony and a shake of the reins for How Hard Can It Breathe being brought towards the outside by Luke Morris. Down the hill they go towards the final two. Cantora tries to quicken things up in front, still leads, but Rubina Rose has not been shaken off as they make the home turn. Cantora and Rubina Rose now. Rubina Rose on the outside moving well for Andrea. Cantora's going to have to fight for this as they head down for the final funnel and Rubina Rose has gone past Cantora pretty easily. Miss Harmony in behind is staying on, however. It's not over yet. Rubina Rose, here's Miss Harmony and how hard could it be running on two? Miss Harmony down the outside will get up. Miss Harmony wins. Bit of an upset. Miss Harmony wins. Tight second. Rubina Rose who got very tired. Involved a second with how hard could it be? And the favourite was stone last, Cantora.